Listen, um, our aviation industry is so very important to the American economy. And of course, we want to make sure that uh, consumers, that flyers are safe and that our airlines operate in an efficient manner. So this comes up every five years. I'm on the Commerce Committee. We've been working on this bill for more than a year. I have been especially focused on the issue of bolstering our workforce pipeline. We have a shortage of pilots, aviation mechanics, other people who work in the industry, and we are barely pulling from uh, all of our human talent. So I have provisions in the bill that address that along with other things. And uh, I remain very hopeful that we'll get all of this over the finish line before the deadline come Friday. Okay, so Senator, in your mind, there is not a chance that a short-term authorization may need to happen, considering this doesn't just need to make it through your chamber, but the House as well. Listen, uh, we are in the midst of the sausage making that happens in Congress, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, there is a, a commitment, a, a large consensus that we, we need to try to get this over the finish line, and I, I remain hopeful that, that we will. Well, Senator, there is some disagreement even between you and some of your other Democratic colleagues around certain provisions, uh, including more flights out of DCA, the airport just down the road from where you and I are. It's staunchly opposed by senators in neighboring states. Senator Warner, Kate, uh, Van Hollen, uh, Cardin, to name a few, are all opposed to this. I know you're for it. What do you say to those, though, who suggest that adding slots at Reagan could potentially lead to further delays or even safety risks? Well, I have great respect and, and really affection for uh, my colleagues in Maryland and Virginia, but they are wrong on this issue, uh, to put it bluntly. They're just wrong. Uh, this will not compromise safety in any way. Uh, we have addressed this issue with, uh, with the FAA. Uh, basically, we want to make sure that flyers uh, throughout our country uh, have access to the nation's capital. This is the seat of government. And uh, basically, this is a modest proposal that will add about 1% uh, to uh, DCA's daily operations. Uh, I think that my colleagues respectfully have certain interests that they're trying to protect. Their safety issue simply does not hold water. And uh, I'm hopeful that at the end of the day, um, uh, we'll be able to have uh, some more flights. Uh, really, it's just a handful more flights coming in and out of uh, the airport that serves the nation's capital, and certainly people west of the Mississippi uh, should have access, as well as folks on this side who, who go back and forth every single day. Well, Senator, in addition to serving on the Commerce, Science, and Transportation Committee, you also serve on a few other key committees, including the Senate Banking Committee. And I'd like to lean on uh, that expertise you have for a moment, if, if, you, if you will. We got a report out yesterday, an independent third-party probe into a toxic workplace culture at the FDIC. There are some Republicans who are now calling for the resignation of the FDIC Chair Marty Grunberg. Do you think he should resign? Well, let me say that I am still uh, reviewing the report. Uh, what I am seeing there, some of the things that I, I see there are, are concerning, even disturbing. Uh, but we will hear from the chairman uh, in just a few days. Uh, he will appear before my committee and uh, we'll get a chance to hear from him directly, uh, and we'll see where we go from there. But let me just Fair be enough, very, Senator. Very clear. Let me be clear that an abusive and toxic workplace environment uh, where people uh, feel that they are being abused in some way uh, that is hostile uh, to the work environment is intolerable. And, and uh, one way or the other, it, it will have to be addressed. And, and we will make sure that that, that that happens. Well, and Senator, we'll look forward to that testimony uh, before the Banking Committee in just a few days. There, of course, is a lot uh, still happening that is getting attention outside of Washington, including Israel, where there have been moves into Rafah, the Gaza uh, city, in which more than a, a million Palestinians are taking refu refuge. And we have now gotten confirmation from the Defense Department, uh, from the Secretary Lloyd Austin, that the U.S. has withheld, pause for now, a shipment of bombs to Israel over concern about how they may be used in Rafah. Is this a appropriate for the administration to be doing at this time, sir? I'm very concerned about what's going on in Gaza. And uh, I'm already on the record. I said uh, week, many weeks ago that uh, I'm very concerned about any incursion uh, into Rafah. 
Uh, I pray for a day where Israeli mothers and fathers and Palestinian mothers and fathers can do what all of us parents want. I have two young children myself. Put your children to bed at night in peace and awaken to a world that embraces all of them. And so uh, we intend uh, to uh, make sure that we keep an eye on this situation. Uh, but we need a ceasefire uh, in uh, this situation. Israel has a right to defend itself. I am uh, uh, deeply offended and hurt by what happened on October 7th. Uh, where we saw this attack, where we saw rape and sexual assault used as a weapon of war. Uh, but I'm also very concerned about uh, over 30,000 uh, Palestinian lives that have been lost in this conflict, uh, the majority of them being women and children. Uh, so uh, I'm hopeful that at the end of the day, uh, we will recognize that the answer to death and destruction uh, is not more death and destruction.